Welcome to IPRAT's Infection Prevention Module on Cleaning and Disinfection. The learning objectives for this module includes understanding the difference between cleaning and disinfection, understanding why cleaning is an essential step before disinfection, recognizing the importance of following manufacturer's instructions for use, recognizing the importance of following facilities policies, knowing the contact times for disinfecting products used in your facility, and recognizing special considerations for isolation rooms. Cleaning and disinfection of the resident care environment and other areas throughout the facility are essential in preventing the spread of infections for both residents and staff. The spread of infection can be caused by hand contact with contaminated surfaces. The amount and types of germs that are on a surface depends on many factors, including the number of people who use the area, moisture, the type of material, air contamination, and whether the surface is a high touch area. When cleaning and disinfecting, always follow the manufacturer's instructions for the product being used, as well as the manufacturer's instructions for the equipment and surface being cleaned. It is important to wear appropriate personal protective equipment for your safety. When cleaning and disinfecting, the workflow should always start from clean and move to dirty. For example, clean and disinfect surfaces around the resident's bed before bathroom surfaces. Every staff member plays an important role in keeping the resident's environment safe and clean by utilizing this method. Cleaning is a critical step before disinfection can be accomplished. Cleaning involves removing visible soil. This could be done through using soaps, detergents, or other types of cleaning products. Again, always follow manufacturer's instructions and in your facility's policies and procedures for both the cleaning product you are using as well as the surface or piece of equipment that you're going to clean. This is to ensure that the surface or equipment's materials are compatible with the cleaning product being used and to ensure that you are cleaning the surface or piece of equipment effectively without damaging it. Disinfection is the killing and prevention of most type of germs. As stated in the previous slide regarding cleaning, we should always refer to the manufacturer's instructions for the disinfectant and the surface or piece of equipment being disinfected to ensure that we are disinfecting properly. In the product label for the disinfectant, you will be able to find the contact time for the disinfectant. The contact time is the amount of time the surface has to be visibly wet for the disinfectant to kill what is labeled to kill. You may see many contact times ranging from seconds to minutes, depending on the type of germ. Always use the longest contact time listed to ensure you are killing everything that the disinfectant is labeled to kill. You may have to reapply the product to prevent drying before contact time is up. This slide demonstrates how to read a disinfectant label. First, you should read the entire label. Remember, the label is the law. First on the list is active ingredients. This tells you what are the main disinfecting chemicals within the product. EPA registration number. Remember, U.S. laws require that all disinfectants be registered with the EPA. Directions for use or instructions for use. This tells you where should the disinfectant be used, what germs does the disinfectant kill, what types of surfaces can the product be used on, and how to properly use the disinfectant. Contact time. How long does the surface have to stay wet with the disinfectant to kill the germs? There are also signal words, which means caution or warning or signs for danger. How risky is this product if it is swallowed, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin? There's also precautionary statements. How do I use this disinfectant safely? Should I use PPE? Next is first aid. This is information what you should do if the disinfectant is in the eyes, mouth, or skin of the healthcare worker, or if you breathe it in. Lastly, 
storage, and disposal. Important information, how the disinfectant should be stored or how should you dispose of the disinfectant? And what should I do with the container? Again, these are all critical information on how to properly read a disinfectant label. High touch surfaces are surfaces that have high hand contact. The types of products you use and how often you clean and disinfect these surfaces are determined by your facility's policies. High touch surfaces in resident care areas should be cleaned and disinfected often. As stated previously, use the appropriate disinfectant for the right job according to the manufacturer's instructions for use for both cleaning and disinfecting the product and the piece of equipment and surface used. Here are some examples of high touch surfaces you might see in your setting. Can you think of any other high touch surfaces? An important cleaning and disinfection program component is a safe and effective workflow. You first want to determine if the resident's condition or current state allows for safe cleaning of their room and environment. Some residents have a sensitivity to cleaning and disinfection products when they're being used and may need to be out of the room while cleaning, as well as some time after cleaning and disinfecting. You also need to ensure that you are wearing the appropriate PPE for cleaning and disinfection products. This information can be found on the product safety data sheet, which should be readily available. Along with using the appropriate PPE required for products, PPE should be used according to your facility's standard and transmission-based precaution policies and procedures. Please note that rooms that do not require transmission-based precautions or isolation should be completed first. Be aware of any obstacles or clutter that may be present and relocate these items with the resident's permission and knowledge. Ensure that the resident knows where you relocated the item. Any damaged or broken furniture or equipment should be handled according to the facility's policies and procedures. The workflow employed in facilities should be systematic and used consistently to prevent us from missing any areas. Depending on a facility's established procedures, workflows can be left to right or clockwise. Regardless of the number of beds in the room, each resident care area should be cleaned in the same manner. For example, starting at the foot of the bed and moving clockwise. Any bodily fluid spilled should be cleaned immediately according to the facility's bodily fluid spill cleanup policy and procedure. Higher surfaces should be cleaned before the lower surfaces to prevent contaminants from falling on already clean surfaces. Some ways a high to low or top to bottom workflow can be followed is by cleaning the bed rails before the legs and cleaning the floors last. Workflows should proceed from cleaner to dirty areas to prevent contamination of clean areas from dirty areas. Low touch surfaces should be cleaned before high touch surfaces. Resident care areas should be cleaned before patient bathrooms and toilets. Within a resident room, shared equipment and common surfaces should be cleaned first. Then items touched during resident care. Items directly touched by the resident should be cleaned last. Again, resident rooms that are not under transmission-based precautions or isolation should be cleaned first. It is important to look at the disinfectant's kill claims to ensure that the product being used will work on the type of germ the resident is in isolation for. For example, there are many disinfectants that are ineffective against Clostridium difficile. On the other hand, bleach products are usually effective against C. diff. Again, this information can be found on the product label. You must use the appropriate personal protective equipment for the type of transmission-based precaution the resident is placed in. For example, contact isolation requires the use of a gown. Be aware of the types of isolation where you need to wash your hands with soap and water instead of using alcohol-based hand rub. Cleaning carts or supplies should not be brought into the resident's room in order to prevent unnecessary risk of contamination. Only bring in necessary supplies when cleaning and disinfecting. Healthcare personnel should leave the room only when cleaning is complete 
and should avoid going in and out of the room. Be sure to perform hand hygiene after you remove your PPE. Disinfect the reusable supplies and products before storing them. To recap, always follow manufacturer's instructions and your facility's policies to ensure the safety of residents and staff, including yourself, and to prevent citations. Cleaning is an essential step before disinfection and should not be skipped to prevent the transmission of infection. This concludes IPRAT's Infection Prevention Module on Cleaning and Disinfection. Should you have any questions about this presentation, please contact us at mdhhs-iprat at michigan.gov. Thank you for your time.